Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Soundtrack for Beginners. In this week's episode, our first episode, we're going to look at the very basics of sound editing using Soundtrack Pro, which is a program that you can get for the Apple Mac. What we're going to look at this week is how to import video into Soundtrack Pro. I'm going to look at how to import sound effects into Soundtrack Pro. I'm going to look at how to import music into Soundtrack Pro. We're going to look at how we can move them around on the timelines, get them in the position that we want. I'm going to look at how we can do some basic editing of clips on the timeline by slicing them up and deleting the unwanted parts. So let's get diving right in. Here's our project in front of us. It's the default layout. For those of you that have done video editing before, we've got a timeline right in the centre here. It's a chronological timeline so we can place media on it, both video and audio. And we've got a timeline scrubber here where we can move backwards and through, forwards through time. And if we want to play on our timeline, all we've got to do is press the space button and that'll start playing. And we can see there on the left hand side we've got the time code, so 5-6 seconds going along. And it also tells us how many beats there are. There we go. We've got video tracks and we've got audio tracks. Um, on the right hand side here we've got our levels, so we've got our audio meters that tell us if our audio is peaking, we've got left and right channels. We want to stay um, around minus 12 to close to zero if we can, and we definitely don't want to see those going red there because that means the audio is peaking and it's going to be no good. On the right hand side beneath that we've got our browser window and this is where we're going to start off. We're going to use the browser to find where we saved our audio tracks on our computer and our video. So I've got all the assets together in a folder already. What we're going to do today is we're going to import a video and I'm going to add some audio to it. So down here at the minute we've got the little home button. I'm going to click that. This takes me to my, my home settings for my mother user profile which is student at the minute. I'm going to click computer to go to the computer settings. Now I've saved all of my files that I need on the desktop so I'm going to double click desktop and they're in the folder here we go and here's all of my all of my assets that I need both my audio and my videos so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to select my video which is webfruity mp4 and I'm going to drag that over oh there we go I'm kind of messed that up and there we go drag that onto the video timeline and there we can see the video is now displayed up here in the top left hand corner of the screen and when I scrub through and start playing we can see the video and on the track below we've got Webfruity MP4 sound and we can see here we can see it's displayed as a waveform that we can see there so that's the sound in the project so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the audio that's already on the video because that's no good and I want to redo it and there we go so here we go, so we've got our video there. Next thing we need to do is drag the audio we're going to need. So I've got the mink grinder, I'm going to drag that over here to track one, we'll just put that on track one. Uh, I've got Donna's, which is a song that we're going to use. There we go. If you want to preview anything that's worth noting as well, if you just click it in there, in the, uh, the browser, and it'll start previewing. You can use the little pause section here to pause it, or the volume to turn the volume up and down. So dodgeball bounce, I need that as well, we'll drag that over. The Donners we've said we're already going to need that, so we'll drag that over as well, put that on another track. Uh, pop, we need the pop as well, we'll have that pop sound effect. Drag that up there, there we go. Fantastic. And let's start off. First thing we'll do, we'll just drag some of these out of the way so that we can start to have a look. Now, if we navigate through, I'm just going to scrub through the timeline, so click on the timeline up here. I'm going to find this a bit close to the end. Where? Oh, there we go. Sorry, this is just I've accidentally set the in and the out points for my video. Very annoying. So, there we go. Right. Let's find this a bit where I'm going to use the pop sound effects. So I'm going to drag the meat grinder out of the way. There we go. And so here we go. So in the background we've got four grapes there. They're being snatched up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the back button on my keyboard. That's the arrow to the left to go back a frame at a time. A couple of frames at a time. A frame at a time. And what I want to do is I want to, every time that one of these grapes gets picked up, so it's a little cocktail stick coming in, I want to play the pop sound effect. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the here's the pop. So I'm going to move that over and now I'm going to start to sync that up. 
on the timeline here, on, on the left hand side at the bottom of the timeline, there's a little slider bar. And if you hover your mouse over it, it will say zoom. Click down on that and drag that to the left and you'll be able to zoom in on the timeline a bit more. Now you need to do that because you want to get pinpoint accuracy with when you sync your sounds up. So I'm just going to scrub through. So at the moment that that, that gets picked up, on, that's when I want the pop sound effects to go. Now if we have a look at the waveform for the pop sound effect, you can clearly see here the black curve, that's when the sound set is loudest. So I'm going to move that over so that it's just synced up with the exact moment that it gets picked up. So if I move the timeline again, we can see. There we go. Right. So now, if we play this little section, we should see that that's now synced up with, with the object getting picked up, the grape getting picked up. There we go. And we're going to copy that over and over again for the rest of the thing. So what I'm going to do is, if I hover my mouse over the end of the track, we'll see it turns into a small icon with two arrows and. Uh, and some lines, and then if I hold down my mouse, and with my mouse still held down, I'll move it, I can shorten that clip. Oh, I should be able to anyway. There we go. And I'm going to shorten that. There we go. I'm also going to shorten it at the start as well. We don't want any of the bit before the sound starts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that clip on the soundtrack, and I'm going to go copy. And there move using the forward key on my keyboard now, the, the arrow key going to the right. I'm going to move along to the point when the next one gets picked up and then I'm going to press Control and V, Command and V, or I can even equally go Edit and Paste and paste in that same pop sound effect again. And same thing again, I'm going to find when the next one gets picked up, which is there. And I'm going to paste that in again and for the last one as well. And there we go. So. So I did that by pressing just Command and V, for those who don't know. But equally, I'll just delete those last two. I could just move my timeline slider here to the right point. Get it exactly synced up. And then I could go Edit, Paste, and get the right time. Edit, Paste. And it's pasted in that sound that I previously copied. So now let's watch out. There we go. So that's our first sound effect. Now, much like Final Cut Pro, and much like Photoshop, Soundtrack Pro is great because it works on layers. Now, layers allow you to arrange different assets within your project uh, and layer them one on top of the other. So they don't always have to be one after the other. So I've got this pop, pop, pop sound effect going in the background there as they're getting picked up. But if I zoom back out on my timeline, what I also want is I also want a little bit of music in the background. So down here, I've got a track that says Donna's. So I'm going to click that there. We can see that. I'm going to drag that over and I'm going to set that playing in the background. So I'm just going to drag that over. Now what I might find when I move my timeline over here is I might find that the sound the sound in the music is drowning out the sound effects and I don't want that at the moment. So what we'll do in a second is we'll I'll show you how to turn that down. So I'm going to press spacebar now to, to preview it and see how it is. Yeah, that music's a bit too loud for me. So what I'm going to do is over here on the Donna's track we've got two, two little slider bars. The first bar here is uh, decides how much the audio is panned towards the left and right speakers or if it's in the center coming out of both. The slider here is the volume of the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that down by eight decibels. Now that should be quite a lot quieter. Yeah, that's quite a lot quieter. Uh, what we'll do is we'll drag that right the way down just to show. There we go. And if I move that up, there we go. Oh. Space bar again. So that's how we can change the volume of a clip is by making sure we've got the selected on the timeline and adjusting the volume of the track it's on. So now we've got two sounds playing at once. We've got the pop sound effect and the music. Next thing we might need to do is we might need to shorten a clip. So we've got a section towards the end of the film where a food processor goes off. And there we go, we see the food presser, and that's the moment it goes off. So what we want at this part is we want the meat grinder sound effect to suddenly kick in. So we've got our meat grinder sound effect here. In fact, if we double click it, there we go, it opens it up in a new track and we can have a little listen to that. So let's see along. So here we go. So that's our meat grinder sound effect there. It sounds pretty good and pretty happy with that. 
And what I'm going to do is we will go back into our project over here, and there's our meat grinder. Now what I'm going to do, at the minute I've got the music playing, I don't want to hear the music at the minute, uh, just while we do this small bit of editing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the music track, and on the music track, if I hover my mouse over, there's three letters on the music track, R, M and S, the M stands for mute, and that means mute track, so I'm just going to mute this track for a second, just while we have a listen to the meat grinder sound effect. There we go, that sounds perfect. Now, at the minute, if we go along, uh, the meat, the the food processor doesn't kick in until about here, but my track's going over there. If I was being really lazy and I couldn't be bothered to move it, what I could do is scrub along to the point at the track where I want the sound effect to kick in, which is about here. Give or take a frame. There we go, one frame exactly. So what I'm going to do is on this frame here, I'm going to hover my mouse over there. I'm going to move up to the toolbar at the top of the timeline and we can see if I have my mouse over the third tool in it looks a little bit like a razor blade it says blade tool B, B for blade tool, now I'm going to click that and I'm going to move my mouse back over here and at the exact, I'm going to hover my mouse over the exact moment that the timeline is set to because my, I've scrubbed along to the point where it kicks in and I'm just going to left click and that's sliced the clip in half now I press A on my keyboard I can move back to move tool or equally come back up and click the arrow to move. I've now sliced this clip in half. So this is where it starts, this clip here, but this stuff I don't I don't need anymore. So I'm going to click that to highlight it and click delete. And now there we go, it kicks in right on time. Perfect. I'm just going to unmute that music track there. And we should be able to hear the music and the meat grinder. Now that meat grinder is a little bit quiet for me, so I'm going to click that again, and I'm just going to boost that up by 6 decibels, and we'll make that. That's better. Perfect. So, there we go. We've learned the very basics of audio editing in Soundtrack Pro. We've learned how to add a video to our Soundtrack Pro project so we can watch it. We've learned how to delete an audio track. We've learned how to slice up audio using the razor tool up here. We've learned how to move audio using the move tool, which is the little arrow. We've learnt how to import audio and add it to different tracks. And we've learnt how to shorten a track by, not only by slicing it, but also by hovering our mouse over the end of the track until it goes into this icon here. And then clicking down and moving. And there we go, the very basics of audio editing. Okay, good luck. I look forward to seeing some of your projects. And do be sure to tune in for next week's more advanced Soundtrack Pro lesson. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing your stuff.